Howdy, Ags. It's good to be back from just a quick week off. Um, we don't have much time to waste, though, because there's a lot going on with offensive coordinators, transfers in and out, who's going to be the next to leave. We have so much to talk about that, plus misbehaviors and my philosophy on that coming up. Let's jump straight in. The um, offensive coordinator is probably one of the biggest things I'm trying to follow right now. What I'd like to do is give you a lot more content coming up on what you're looking at when um, we're on these offensive coordinators, we're thinking about hiring. So I wanna get some film, I wanna show that to you and kind of uh, give you my ideas about what we're bringing in so you can have an idea of what's being brought in. Okay, so I just give you a quick rundown of who, who, who are some names that have been tossed out there. I've heard Dan Mullen, uh, he's retired, you know, ex head coach for Florida. Uh, Brian Hartline, the current Oklahoma State passing game coordinator. Uh, Phil Longo, the UNC OC. Jeff Grimes, the Baylor offensive coordinator. And Garrett Riley, the current uh, offensive coordinator for TCU. I don't think all these are as likely. There have been fun names to talk uh, toss out there. I don't, I don't think Dan Mullen is going to be one that we're really after. But nonetheless, uh, something that has been out there. So we are going to talk uh, in the next few days, uh, particularly probably about uh, Phil Longo, Jeff Grimes, and Garrett Riley. These are the ones that people are watching the airports. Yes, they are watching the airports to see where planes are taking off, where they are going, when they are coming to Easterwood. Because if you know it's leaving from Easterwood or coming to Easterwood, and it's going to one of these destinations like Chapel Hill or Waco, Fort Worth, something like that, then uh, we, we might have somebody that we're interviewing or offering or going to announce. So I'll be bringing that to you as soon as it happens as well. Like I said, got a lot to go into. Um, nothing deep with these guys tonight, but what I would like to do is really just kind of talk about um, maybe what to look for in an offensive coordinator uh, and, and how it would affect what the Aggies are going to do. Because we had a frustrating year. Um, we, we ran pretty much, I'd say, 10 personnel, one running back, four wide receivers, 75% um, of the time. Does that sound about right? And then we got to the LSU game, and then what did we do? We ran um, 20 personnel, 12 personnel, 75% um, of the time, so almost kind of flip-flopped it completely. Um, started putting tight ends in, doubled up tight ends, two tights, uh, two running backs. Really widened the box quite a bit. It's a refreshing look, was it not? Um, something we had been talking about all year, widening that box, making it harder to get around the edge, making, um, uh, you know, giving Zoom some help, giving uh, Fathery some help, giving some some support to the middle of the line. We've been needing it all year. Finally, did in the last game. So, it, thinking about what we're going to be looking at for an offensive coordinator, what what are your top priorities? Put it in the chat. Think about it. What do you want out of an offensive coordinator? It's not enough just to say I want somebody that's effective. That's got to be what it is. And we need to talk about the impact of this as well. Big impact, huge impact. This is a huge hire. Okay. Reverse, uh, rewind. Let's jump back in time for a little bit here, okay? So, in my opinion, Sumlin put a huge target on his back. He started getting rid of, uh, well, of course, when um, uh, Cliff Kingsbury went out. Um, then we hired the guy down in Texas State that just got fired. Name escapes me for the moment. Uh, then we had Noel Mazzoni, right? And, uh, you know, we went through defensive coordinators the same way. What, what was on your mind when you were thinking about this? when this was all rolling out. Because what, what I was thinking was, well, since we're hiring offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators, that's where we think the problem is. We don't think the problem is with the head coach, meaning like, since it's up to someone to, to make these hires and, and figure these problems out, he's saying, no, the problem's with the defensive coordinator, problem's with the offensive coordinator. Then we hire one, particularly on the defensive side and even the offensive side too, and we're ineffective. Big problem. It's a big problem. Huge problem, really. Think about what that's saying. You're saying as the coach, I think the problem's here. And then you hire somebody, it's on you to find the right hire. 
So when you hire that person, they better do what you need them to do. Because otherwise, if they don't do it, you're really saying that it's on you. You're the problem. Why? Two reasons. One, because you hired the guys, your responsibility to find somebody that's effective. So one, you're either not effective at firing, uh, finding somebody that's, that's effective, or they weren't the problem in the first place, and you were the problem. The person hiring the offensive coordinator was the problem. So right now, Jimbo is putting a huge target on his back. This hire is extremely important for him in his tenure. Can't understate, understate this enough. Durkin was a pretty big hire too. I, I hope he did his due diligence. We'll break that down later. Um, Adazio is a huge hire. We're going to break that down too. You guys have asked for it. We will talk about it. Not tonight. But this one's going to be big. We saw this offense this year, and it was, it was not good. Now, set that aside. Take it. Set it aside. Okay? Because... Um, Daryl Dickey's gone. He's been relieved of his duties. That's why we're going through this, right? So we, we've kind of said that these offensive responsibilities were on him. All right, fine. If the offensive responsibilities were on him, who were the offensive responsibilities on for LSU? Did they switch? Did Jimbo take that over? Did he give that responsibility to somebody else? I don't know. We, we can't know that right now, okay? But... What I'm thinking about from my, my main criteria for um, this offensive coordinator, I, I don't care if they want to come in and they want to run 10 personnel, 11 personnel. I, I, don't, I don't care if they want to get up there and just put one wide receiver out there or if they want to run wishbone. I don't, I don't care. What I care about is that it, it, it plays to the strengths of our players. Okay. It seems like all season long, we, you and I, we knew it. We knew Zune had an issue, and we didn't see anybody game planning to get him any help. And he needed a little bit of help. It's okay to say it. He wasn't perfect. We, we, we made some criticisms. We didn't focus on him, just the techniques, right? Not, we're not judging the person here. But he needed some help, and we, didn't, we just didn't do it till the end of the game. I mean, till the end of the season, last game. We put it all together for LSU. I need the offensive coordinator to realize what they're working with. And I need them to understand that they've got to match the offense to who they're playing and who we've got on the on the field. We, we, we can't, whoever we select from this group, it can't be somebody that's going to trot out four wide receivers all the time. We've got Donovan Green that has proven to be a very valuable commodity. Very valuable. We have got to game plan this guy in uh, with massive, massive um, leeway. Uh, we've got to weight this game plan with, a, with him in mind big time, okay? Who else? Moose. A chain. Um, and then we've got to shy away from, from, the, from the areas that we're having issues in. And maybe some of those go away this next year, but you know, as, as we saw, once we started getting two tight ends in there, getting more help blocking, we, we started being even more sneaky and we could complete more passes because, you know, Donovan was blocking and then going out for passes and all those kinds of things. It just made things a little bit more difficult, but we also got time. And once we had time, uh, Connor was finding uh, Moose. He was finding Evan. Uh, gosh, who else did he find? Um, you know, uh, Noah Thomas. We, we were finding these guys. We were able to get the ball to who we had to um, our talent we've got plenty of it you know uh, our offensive line cannot be perfect but uh, they can sure they can sure be good with the right game plan so um, very interesting thought to think about what this offensive coordinator is going to look like I've looked I've looked at some of the film preliminarily and I think I got a decent idea about who I, I would kind of like to go for but I really want to look at it and break it down a little bit more with you all hit your comments about what it is. Maybe if you see some things familiar, might be a little more comfortable, but we'll see. We'll see. So I'm going to try and bring you that first episode. We're going to probably look at Phil Longo from UNC first, somewhere around Wednesday or Thursday. So if you haven't already, like and subscribe. That way you can get that content coming straight to you. I want to feed into you guys quite a bit more. And so we got quite a, quite a few things. I'm going to shorten the episodes, but we're going to get a little bit 
uh, we're going to get a little bit more in depth with uh, some uh, specifics. All right. So transfer portals hot right now. Huge, huge hot. Did you know that, and not that it makes a huge difference, guys, but did you know, we know that Denver Harris is um, claimed to have entered the transfer portal. He's currently not in there, though. Just so you know, he's not in there right now. But we'd like to go over with you first off who's in there, who's not in there, who we think is supposed to be in there, and who we think is leaving. A lot of moving parts going on right now. So just a few names I've heard tossed around that you know are leaving, going to be entering the transfer portal. Uh, Ish Harris. It hurts me. I'm trying not to comment on each one of these because uh, I've got different thoughts on each one. But Ish Harris, uh, linebacker, Blake Smith, tight end, Atun Meese, defensive end, Caden Davis, uh, place kicker, Chase Lane, receiver, LJ Johnson. Ooh, that one hurts. I like this guy. Running back, uh, Elijah Judy, defensive line, Donnell Harris, Edge, Haynes King, P.J. Williams, Denver Harris, Marcus Burris. Recently got in um, Brian George is out there. Um, Moten just entered as well today. So let me give you the list of like who's actually in there currently. Um, and that might vary from the list that you have heard. Because I've also heard that Marcus Burris is in there too. Not a big flashy name that we know of right at the moment, but he's there. Right now, uh, in the portal, actively listed as Donnell Harris. Josh Moten, cornerback, uh, Dallas Walker, came in with Isaiah Rakes, I believe. LJ's in there. Eli Stowers has recently declared, so we now we got two quarterbacks in there. Toon Meese is in there. PJ's in there. Blake Smith's in there. Uh, Miles Jones. Uh, Elijah Judy. Like I said, Haynes King, Brian George, Chase Slane. Uh, last two, Caden Davis and Alan Guerrero. So... Yeah, few in there, not quite all that you've heard though, right? So we were we were thinking um, Denver was in there for sure, and he's not. What does that mean though? What does that mean? I, I don't know what that means right now, but I think it's an, an inevitability that he's going to end up not at A&M next year. I know he was a great cover corner, just couldn't quite get it figured out off the field. We all know that. That's what's going on probably with PJ. A um, few others as well. So that's who's there right now. Um, what do you notice? What patterns? Because the next question I think people want to ask is, well, who's going to be next? Who's coming up next? I think it's actually a fairly easy question to answer. Um, so as you go through those names one more time, just thinking about them, What's the, what do they all have in common? I think all they've got in common is basically what one of three things. They all have one of these things in common. Either they've been injured, they, which maybe is underneath this umbrella as well, which is haven't played, haven't had any playing time, or have had off-the-field issues. Those are the three things. The, those three things, I think, are what you can take to the bank as what you can expect to find as the factors for who's going to uh, transfer next, right? Because now we want to know, is it over with? Uh, we, we've got like 10, 10 folks who, have, who are in the transfer portal, depending on which list you want to look at from, you know, Hayes Fawcett's list from what he's put out uh, on three, uh, 247, uh, all those um, different outlets. All the lists vary just a little bit. So what's actually in the portal, that's what I read off to you a second ago. They're not all there yet. Maybe it'll get updated. I think what you can expect is anybody that fits one of those three criteria is probably going to be who you're going to find in the transfer portal next. Yeah. So let's speculate, right? That's fun. Let's speculate. Who could that possibly be then? Um, let's play the guessing game. You know, Put it in the comments. Pause this whole thing. See see what you think. I think we're probably kind of going to come up with about the same names. I hope some of them aren't going to be there. But if I'm having to guess, if I'm having to go through and speculate and make reasonable assumptions about who that might be, I think I think the next one that makes the most sense is probably Chris Marshall, right? 
I mean, he had some of those problems off the field. And we'll go position by position here and kind of uh, tell you about, you know, who is um, my guess is not coming back, who will enter the portal, and then who will come back. So give you a couple of quick things to put out there. Jalen Jones declared for the, the draft. Uh, Denver Harris, I don't think is coming back. He has said he's going to the transfer portal. He's not in there yet, but I don't see how that's not going to end up that way. Okay. Another one I would think about maybe is going to enter in at some time. He does kind of fit the criteria, but I'm not real sure. I maybe give it a 50-50 shot at this point. Um, Smoke Bowie. I think that's one to watch out for that might be next, might be coming up. How many are going to leave? How many are not? No one knows, but I think maybe this might be one that you you might see. Who I don't think you're going to see is Bryce Anderson. I don't I don't think Bryce Anderson is going to be in there. I think this guy is here. I think he's here to stay. Felt like he had his head on straight. Feel like he he knows what he's about. Feel like he knows where he stands with everything, and that he can see he can see his future here. All right, Antonio Johnson going to the NFL. Uh, I don't think he's quite said it yet, but I'm pretty sure that's where he's going to be headed to. Damani Richardson graduating. Um, Killebrew. Killebrew is a guy that didn't see a lot of playing time. He's injured. He might fit the criteria, but I don't think he, I think he's probably willing to hang around. You know, we haven't heard a lot from this guy, so it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I just don't think there's much animosity. I didn't hear anything off the field, so I'm not as worried about him being one. I think Bobby Taylor's here to stay. I think Deuce Harmon, uh, Gilbert, Brian George has entered the um, a transfer portal, but I think Jared Kerr is going to stick around. Okay, Josh Mooton's gone, Miles Jones gone, Tyreek Chapel is here to stay, and uh, we got a few other uh, walk-ons in the in the DB area that we could you know mention, but we're not really into that right now. There's no reason for all that. So we got a pretty deep defensive back situation going on still. So I'm not I'm not worried about depth there as much. Um, we got another class coming in. We need to have a decent DB class coming in. Two or three guys probably at least uh, need to be pretty good quality, so that we can reload. We're losing some of these guys, and so um, the question is going to start becoming like, uh, who who's stepping up once some of these guys start going out? That's because that's where we are with probably you know the offensive line. We're in a, a bit of a pickle with that. We didn't recruit real well in regards to 2019. I think I've gone over this with you in another video. We we had, what, three, four offensive linemen we took. One's in the NFL, Kenyon Green. One's medically retired. And I'm blanking on the other one. Uh, maybe it's just Layden Robinson. But uh, when, when you're missing two out of the three, and those are supposed to be your seniors this year, all right. Well, okay, not a big deal, but if you miss the following year, then you're even in more trouble, which we did, right? Because uh, Chris, uh, not Chris Marshall, but um, Chris Morris, offensive lineman, ends up transferring out top offensive line recruit for us that year, and we don't have him. A few other problems just like that worked in. So we got to start working on making sure we're replacing with these with this depth. The place that we're probably deepest right now is probably still defensive line, talent-wise. Not experience-wise, though. So here's who we've got, and, and here's who is going into the transfer portal. Right now, we have um, well, we have a whole bunch, um, and I, I think this is probably our best-looking spot. Marcus Burris is, is headed to the transfer portal. And um, I think that's all that we've got so far, to be quite honest. I mean, you've got some guys that have seen the, the, the field here and there, like a Darius Jones, but... He's probably been leapfrogged at this point because we got uh, Walter Nolan played significant minutes this last year. Shamar Stewart did. Yeah, Overton did. Uh, we haven't seen Gabriel uh, Dendy just yet, but I'm not expecting that. Again, Dad lives in College Station. They're around there. Probably not a reason for them to think about transfer portal right now. Shamar Turner, number five, played significant minutes this year. He's really waiting for... Uh, I think he kind of had a breakout season this year, but I think it's even more poised for his uh, his junior season. Now, Toon Meese did enter the portal, and that one hurt me. Him and LJ, I watched their recruiting really, really closely. I one of those guys real bad. So those kind of hurt the most, but I, I understand it. I, I hope for the best for these two. Um, I hope wherever they land, they land on their feet. I wish it would have worked out for them here. 
I'm not sure what the deal was with Toon Mies. It looked like he was a starter and injury injuries happen. Um, so maybe there was writing on the wall. Not sure. Maybe he just didn't feel comfortable. Who knows? Maybe there's some off-the-field stuff going on too. And I White saw the field quite a bit, kind of turning into a bit of a, of a rover, edge, linebacker, hybrid kind of situation, and I like it, and I like it a lot. I wonder, guy I've been high on, Anthony Lucas, is he going to enter the transfer portal? He hasn't yet. Haven't heard any rumblings of it yet. I think he's a, I think he's a big piece for our depth moving forward. I really hope he hangs around. Really hope he hangs around, okay? I believe McKinley Jackson's coming back. And I believe that will be for his senior year. He's a junior currently. We saw Malik Silla play huge minutes this uh, last couple of games. And I really think that he's, um, I think he sees a future here on campus. I think he's he's an Aggie uh, in, in his eyes all day, every day, okay? Isaiah Rake's not going anywhere. Really like what we saw from uh, Albert Regis this year. So a lot of guys, a lot of guys that we have on the defensive line that I think are going to be hanging around. That's really good news. We need to build a lot of depth there because one area that we are struggling in is going to be uh, linebacker. Linebacker I'm worried about. Um, Andre White, Chris Russell, uh, both seniors going to be moving on. That leaves us with Cooper. We saw some minutes from, I believe, Martrell Harris this last year. Um, freshman, though, is just transferring out. Uh, not sure what Terry and Lee's got going on. Is he somebody that, um, you know, is going to be able to step up and play? I'm not sure. We had the decommitment from Anthony Hill for the 2023 class. It's not sounding good. I, I, Linebacker is an issue, huge problem right now. So, this is an, an area you need to be looking out for for us to hit the portal big time. We have got to hit the portal for linebacker. No, no ifs, ands, or buts, okay? No ifs, ands, or buts. Um, but let's move on because um, offensive line. Now, Layden Robinson uh, is just a junior. I do think he is listed as a three-year letterman, even though I believe he's in his fourth year. So I don't know if he got that COVID year or what happened there, but I would like to wonder if he's going to come back. It'd be really great if he did. And how good would he be? You know, maybe we might see him kind of doing what he did in his sophomore year over again in freshman year. So if Layton comes back, that'd be, that'd be pretty huge for us. Um, Fathery's coming back. I don't have a doubt in my mind about that. Bryce Foster's coming about, back. I don't have a doubt in my mind about that. Dewberry stepped up and played left guard. Uh, four or five games this last year as a freshman worked really really well and if you're already playing like that are you thinking about leaving I'm not thinking about leaving I think he's staying Zune's staying uh, Wyckoff is staying I think Naboo is also staying I, I don't I don't really hear a whole lot coming from this group this is not a group that you really see as you're thinking it's transferring hopefully Moko can come back stronger than ever um, Aki will be there as well Although I do wonder, I do wonder about that one. If I was going to put any one of these guys uh, transfer watch, I'd probably put Aki. Just not sure. Um, maybe Remington, Remington Strickland as well. He's a guy that, you know, he was a little bit undersized coming in. Hell of an engine on him. Just not sure if he's ever going to be able to quite break through on that side. Kind of reminds me a bit of a, a Max Wright, but on the opposite side of the ball. Maybe he, he wants to be... Uh, Maybe a different position would suit him a little bit better. I'm not sure what they've got in the works for this guy, but um, seemed like he was going to be a um, huge motivator, huge engine kind of guy. And um, maybe, maybe he would look for somewhere else to play, though, just because like things aren't quite working out for him that way. Not sure what to say. Um, like I said, Moko um, comes back from his injury. I think he stays here. Not too worried about that. Hunter, or freshman this last year, didn't see much time, but... Seems to be an, uh, an, an Aggie through and through. We've got a couple nice guys coming in, hopefully still, for the 2023 class. I'm not going to get into those guys right right now, but um, we did miss out on the one, right? P.J. Williams hit the transfer portal. He does not see himself as an Aggie at this point. Some reasons for that. And um, hopefully whatever this guy lands, again, he'll do the same. Uh, wish him the best. 
I know these guys are fighting some demons. Um, you, you, you can't, you got to be real careful how you how you you think about this in these situations. But um, never never in doubt wanting the best for these guys, but but wanting to speak truth to these these guys as well in their situation. What can I say? You know. Um, who else? Offensive line. I don't think there's a lot more to say about the offensive line. QB is another spot, though. We're going to need to hit the, the, the portal, right? I, I said, you know, Haynes King's in there. Stowers is in there. That leaves us with Connor, and it leaves us with uh, Max Johnson. Sounds like it's okay, but year after year, we're going um, three quarterbacks per year, and that's got to stop. Um, so based off of that pattern, we have got to um, it go it take at least one one quarterback. Um, Spencer Sanders transferring out of Oklahoma State, maybe that's something. I kind of doubt it, but you got to always have your head on the swivel for these kinds of things. You never know how it's going to work out. He's probably looking to start somewhere. It doesn't look like that would be here, so we're really just going to have to look for a role player, but we're going to need at least one guy. So... Tight ends, I think we're looking really um, maybe strong point for us at tight end because we got Donovan Green. It's not a high impact um, position, so hopefully we're not going to see you know major injuries here or anything like that. Um, Jake Johnson going to probably end up working out well, I think as well, in addition to Donovan. But Blake Smith's transferring out, so that's one tight end gone. Um, Garza probably going to hang around, and uh, Ostrom. Freshman this last year, we'll see what takes place. Uh, I think we've got a, a pretty good battle that's going to go on for the second spot here, uh, but between this this whole group, and um, yeah, interesting, very very interesting thought. See what that's going to look like because I think that's our way forward, and it's actually going to end up kind of dictating who we're going to go with with offensive coordinator. At least I hope so. Wide receivers, um, a lot of talk about Evan Stewart. And I know there's folks listening to this. If they're getting this far, they're telling themselves, oh, yeah, he's, he's transferring to Texas. He's transferring. To, does he look like he was transferring to Texas in the LSU game? Somebody tell me, did he look like he was transferring to Texas? I, I don't think so. This is probably the million-dollar question on a transfer and whether or not he's leaving or staying. I think he sees himself working with these guys. I think he sees what can, can, can be there. And I think he feels at home. I really do. I think him and Connor work well, and, and, and that, that, that works into a lot of recruiting to keep guys on, on campus. So I think Evan's going to hang around. Moose is hanging around. Um, and then, you know, Noah Thomas, we expect this guy to leave. I mean, he just kind of started getting his feet wet. Things are looking kind of good. And is he going to leave? My bet's no. So I think we got three solid guys. Chase Lane's leaving. Devin Price saw a few minutes. I don't think he's leaving. Dad's on the on on the um, you know T price. He's gonna hang around with Dad. Anias should be headed out. Um, Yule Keith, you gotta wonder. Maybe um, seems like this guy would have made it on the field a little bit more by now, but he, he he hasn't. And so I do wonder if he's one to look out for on the transfer portal. But if I'm gonna stick that tag anywhere, I definitely think it's got to go to Chris Marshall. Okay, so. That's that's where my money's at so far. But otherwise, I think I think we're looking pretty good wide receiver wise. But with that said, uh, this next class needs to be pretty solid. We need to go out and get at least uh, a couple solid guys. Okay, I'm not too worried about it if we're going to go with the scheme that's something similar to the LSU situation, or if our offensive line is going to be solid enough where they can they can just run five so we can get enough protection when it's there i don't think the wide receiver situation means quite as much at least i feel like we've got enough top end on it now that we can utilize it whereas maybe a couple years ago we didn't quite have that that same top end right so getting getting the the protection that we need coming from connor i i, I think i've seen enough from this scheme if we move forward with what we've got that we can distribute the ball enough to be effective all right last group that i really wanted to get to tonight is running backs big question there is whether or not it's a chain uh, whether is whether or not a chain is going to come back and i kind of tend to think he is I, I think he'd like to run track another year 
So I think he'd like to do that. Um, I don't think he got his money's worth out of this football year as well. So I think he could really improve his draft stock if that's the way he wants to go by coming back one more year. And that would be good because LJ is leaving, right? Um, Amari Daniels looked really solid. He, I've, I've been actually pretty high on this guy, although I haven't like seen him as a, a high-end talent. He, he, the running backs, in my opinion, are maybe the, the, the best coach group uh, that we've got. They run with patience and they run with vision, and they know how to work behind our offensive line when they're doing their business. That just hasn't happened all season. A chain is a special talent, though. He's really been able to make a lot work when that offensive line has not been working. So, I I, I think him and Amari are are the are kind of the two guys for next year. If not, it's definitely going to be Amari and 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 Le'Veon Moss. I don't see for it to be any other way. Uh, I, I believe Ernest Crownover can come back one more year. So so maybe he gets a little bit more work this next year, and he's our bigger back. That's an that's an interesting you know thought thinking about that, but with LJ leaving, it definitely leaves room for us to take somebody this um, this coming year, and we definitely need to make sure that we hone in on somebody that's quality so that we can move somebody in in about two years once these guys are starting to 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 move out. Okay, so that that is the overview of the transfer portal and what we have left going on right now. What do you think? You feel pretty good. I actually can't wait for the, the spring preview at this point and start projecting some of these positions. I think we just did quite a bit of it, as a matter of fact. But, wow, who do you think is going to start at all these positions? And that thought is um, very alluring right now. But I'm going to hold off until, until April, and then we'll figure out what the spring game is going to look like. Let's talk about behavior, though, for a second. And... I want to speak into this just because we've had these particular four guys that have had some issues this year. And I want to talk about what I think is our obligation as Aggies to do in these situations um, in regards to these things. Now, it's got to start off with our, our, our code of honor, right? It has to. Aggies do not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. Now that, that, that whole statement, to be honest, I have been contemplating it for a while. And now when it says you don't, and don't tolerate those who do, does that mean ever at all one time? And, and once you've made one mistake for forever, you know, how do you take that statement and how do you deal with that? So I think where I'm at on it is this, first off, I do my best to um, label the action. I'm okay with labeling the action. I'm not okay with labeling the person. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not into that going in there and go tearing these guys down. I do agree that we don't know what's in these guys' life. Just because we don't know what's in their life does not mean that it is an excuse for any behavior that's taken place. But we have to be able to call out the behavior for the betterment of that person. If we cannot call out that behavior, how are we supposed to help that person? You know, if somebody is dealing drugs, I need to be able to say, that's not a good thing. That's wrong. That's harmful to others. Don't do that. Nothing in that statement had anything to do with, with valuing that person. I can still hold the same value for that person while calling that behavior wrong. We, we have to be able to do that as Aggies, and we need to be doing that. How much of that should we tolerate? That's a good question. Right now, here's where I'm at on that. I think what we need to be doing is, first off, anytime behavior uh, comes up that's not agreeable, unacceptable, we call the behavior out. It's, 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 it's on the, the, the person and on us to then come up with a way how to, how to get behind these people and help them to understand and hopefully work towards that understanding of and that change really so that their life can be better that doesn't always happen the, the the final trump card with that rest in the person themselves they have to make the decision themselves i can't make it for them but they'll never make that decision if no one's telling them do you agree never 
Never will somebody make that decision unless they somehow figure it out themselves. But I don't think that's likely to, ha to, to happen. That's, and that's what we do when we raise up our, our children. I constantly point out, this is okay, this is not okay. I guide them in the way that I know to be right to help them have the best life possible. And I want to be able to call out these things so it can help them. And that's, the, that's, that's how I think we approach the Zaggies. So tell me what you think about that. Either way, I think that process needs to be, um, you know, a loving process, a thoughtful process, and, and, and one that is, again, supportive. So that may not have been the perfect way to describe it exactly, but you can get the sentiment behind that, right? And th the idea is to build up men, uh, build up these athletes, do what we can to, to, to bring them alongside and have a good life. Okay, so that's a lot. That's a lot. Remember, like and subscribe if you haven't because um, we are going to take a look at these offensive coordinators one by one, and then when we finally get the one that's going to be ours, we're going to break them down and find out what's up with them. That's going to be a lot of fun. I want you to be here for it. So like and subscribe again. We'll see you soon. Thanks and gig them.